Hi everyone, welcome to episode number 141 of the Knitting Den podcast. It is December 2nd, it's Tuesday morning. My name is Denise and I'm also known as Knitting Den on Ravelry and Instagram. Welcome everyone! I told you I'd be getting into the uh, festive mood. It's December, you can't put it off any longer. I better not um, shake my head too much or this is going to make a little racket. And I'm kind of hot right now, but hopefully I'll cool down in a minute. Um, yeah, so welcome everyone. Hi guys. And welcome if you are a new viewer and you're watching for the first time. It's great to have you sitting with us. Um, I hope you enjoy watching the podcast and come back and watch more. And if you haven't done so already, join the Ravelry group. Um, no, don't you dare. That's your reflection. She's barking at our reflection in the fireplace. Hey, go lie down. Sorry, yes. I'm going to get the that right. Go join the Ravelry group. And I want to say hi to those that joined the Ravelry group this week. We've got a few newbies. Or not, sometimes not new viewers either. You've been watching for a while, but just um, forgot to join the group. So I really appreciate you taking the time to finally do that and to say hi. I love that part as well. So here we go. I want to say hi to, and some of these Ravelry names, um, very difficult to pronounce. <laughs> I'm not even going to try and pronounce this one. G-E-H-I-R-N-I-O-S-2-2. I might put it here or here or here. But you are Karen. Hi, Karen in California, but you're from Austria. Hi, Karen. And Rosebud3164. I can pronounce that one. Donna. Hello, Donna in New York. Molly Munch, who is Shelley. I love that little name, Molly Munch. And I love your avatar. Um, you're in Exeter in the UK. Lamy Doofus. That's a kind of funny name. That's Amy. And she is in Washington. I'm assuming Washington State. Kirsten, who is Chris from Boys, and I think that's Idaho, um, and hi to Kiki, that's not my Kiki, that's Kirsten's Kiki, that's her hubby's name, hi Kiki and Kirsten, Piper's mom, who is Sandy, hi, and she's in Albany, New York, and Bindi wants to say hi to your two Westies, but she doesn't know your name, or their name, so she's just going to put a pause up, hi, hi, Five, <laughs> whatever. Um, QLTR, which I think is kind of like saying it's quilter, 22, and that's Virginia in Michigan. So hi, Virginia, uh, Sandy, Chris, Amy, Shelley, Donna, Karen. Hey, I'm so um, happy that you joined the group. And it was nice to say hello to you all. So to everyone else and to you girls, did you have a nice Thanksgiving? Um, Shelley wouldn't have had a turkey last Thursday or anything. She's in England. Anybody else that was celebrating? I hope you had a fun time. It was very quiet here for us. Look, I've got my hair in little pigtails too. Very, very quiet. Just us three. Uh, I did make a turkey. And... Um, not. I didn't go crazy and make lots of side dishes like I've done in the past. We simply had... Uh, our favourite mashed potatoes, which is full of cream and butter and um, cream cheese. And we had some green beans, but I didn't make green bean casserole. I just um, boiled the green beans and sautéed them um, once they were cooked in, in the pan with a little oil. Actually, it was bacon grease. Just a tiny bit. And then I sprinkled on the bacon that I had cooked in the pan. Um, and then we had rolls. I made my own cranberry sauce with fresh cranberries. So, so easy. I don't know why I've been buying a can or a tin of cranberry sauce all these years. That was delicious. Um, the only thing I cheated on, and I could have made it if I'd have taken the time, is uh, some stuffing. I did open just a stove box, stove top box. And the stuffing over here, guys, back home, it's not like Paxo. I'll just tell you that now. It's um, lots of bigger lumps of bread and the seasoning and all that so it's Paxo is tiny tiny 
Well, tiny granules, I think, and I've always loved Paxo, but I don't get it over here. Um, so I've got used to the stove top or your homemade um, stuffings and all that. Anyway, enough of Thanksgiving. Sorry, it's over with. But I hope you all had a fab time. And here we are, 23 days till Christmas. Have you got your hat on, your headband, or your earrings, or your T-shirt? Yeah, I'm all dressed up, ready. I'm all ready for ready for Santa. Uh, let's see, and before we move in, this might not be a very long podcast, although it will be if I keep rabbiting on like this, um, but I didn't get much knitting done, and I've got a couple of very busy days coming up. One of them is today, including today, but um, just a little quick week in review, as well as Thanksgiving. Last Saturday was Small Business Saturday, and... Um, the only reason I knew about this, I've kind of forgot about it, but my local yarn store had put something on her Facebook page. She was having a little sale, come on down, support your local businesses, your small businesses. Um, and it's kind of like um, Cyber Monday, that's, you know, everyone online gets their little thing. They do their sales, people shop. But Cyber Monday, look at that, I'm, I'm so picky, it has to be perfect. You know, that's kind of like Amazon and all these big companies put big sales on. And then you have Black Friday with all the stores and everything. They have all their crazy sales. So Small Business Saturday is when you can support your local shops, your mom and pop shops. And for me, especially, definitely my local yarn store. So I did pop down there with my friend Michelle. And um, I'll show you what I got in, a, in the show and tell part. We'll get to that in a minute. But if you... Uh, if you did that as well, let me know. Um, it's, I don't know, it's just something I'm very conscious of now. Perhaps being, you know, um, what with Etsy as well, you could definitely support your indie dyers and your, your bag makers and any other kind of crafts that you like. That was a great term. Um, now, saying that, that, that's kind of like uh, Cyber Monday, but not really. But it is on the, on the internet, so forget what I just said about that one. <laughs> Um, all right, we're going to just start quickly with a prize giveaway. It's the November finished object thread in the group. Um, because it's December already, and I've said that already too. All right, hang on. Oh, look, I've got a tiny little bit of Kit Kat left. i got Kit Kats in. So I'm going to pop this in my mouth. I already pulled a winner so I can just announce it and um, not have you sit there waiting while I scroll on the iPad. Um, random number generator. We had 170 entries, so thanks if you did put your finished object in the, that thread. We've got one more month, obviously December, I'm going to do another drawing. And then I have to decide what I'm going to do in the new year. Um, I said I wasn't going to do bag giveaways every month, but I'm still not sure about that. I might. If I get back to sewing. And so anyway, I did um, random number generator. I put in 2 to 170 and it came up with, and I've still got it on here. No, I haven't. It's just disappeared. It was number 49. And number 49 is, where did I write it? Goodness. I didn't write it down because it's on my iPad. I was, I thought I was writing notes. It's the yarn... The yarn goes on. Congratulations. Let me just see what your first name is. Lisa Marie. I, I don't know why I didn't write. I did write it down there. It's because I haven't got my glasses on. It's right at the bottom of the page. So you're in Wisconsin, Lisa. Get in touch. Or Lisa Marie, sorry. Get in touch with me. Let me know you're seeing this. And uh, do tell me. Uh, PM me on Ravelry. I uh, obviously would need your address. But let me know if you want a bag that's got um, Christmas fabric. Or if it's just a, you know, in general anything, and um, I'll have to, I'll just surprise you with either fabric. I haven't got anything made just yet. Okay, folks, let's move on because I did not want this to be too long. Um, as I said, a couple of busy days. Um, today I got to start prepping some food and and that and desserts. We're going to make desserts this evening, my friend uh, Michelle and I. Um, because the book club Christmas party is tomorrow. 
So that's what's going to keep me busy. So moving on, let's start with some finished objects or to be more precise, one finished object. And of course, you probably can all guess, and I haven't put it on. Um, what I'll do is, after I've finished recording, I'll take a little video of me wearing it and then I'll kind of insert it in here um, so you can see it, excuse me, on me. <laughs> jingle, jingle. But uh, here is, did I have the boot with me as well? Here's the sweater, totally finished. Okay, it needs buttons on, but I'm sorry, uh, this is a finished object in my books. So, I probably need to stand back, but I'll just show you like this and then I'll take that video and I'll, I'll probably put it on uh, once I finish recording and then, you know, so I don't mess up the hat and the hair. Um, this, I've got to put the buttons here, look. Now, for some reason, my buttons ended up on the other side of the sweater, even though I knit it the way it said. They're supposed to be on the left-hand side. Mine's on the right-hand side, and I don't know if it's just somehow the way I twisted, um, you know, the, the way it f fell. If I had it on this side, it looks as if it's right behind me. Um, I don't know. That's, that's what I've decided to do, is wear the, the buttons on the right-hand side. The pattern was from this book. Um... This was a trunk, is that what you call them? Trunk show at my local yarn store a few weeks ago. And she had a couple of these sweaters on the models, one being the one I just knit. Um, this is the, the plain sweater, the Packard. And then in this book, as I've said quite a few times, there's lots of different designs, but based on that one plain sweater at the beginning. That's the one I did, Luckiest Day. Oh, you know what? Oh, I don't know. I was going to say that it... No, that's on our left side. It looks like it's on the right side on the screen. But my... Oh, no, no. It's all twisted around. I've used... And I didn't bring the bag or the ball band. I've said it a few times. This hat feels as if it's falling that way. I used um, an alpaca blend yarn. Wait a minute. I'll just get the label. So I can't remember what else was in it. But... It's this from Alpaca Yarn Company, Snuggle, and it's 55% alpaca, 15% wool, 30% acrylic. The acrylic is not softening this up as much as I would like it to. Um, I don't know why, I've only just realised, but actually I haven't just realised, I've known this for years, and I just don't know why I've been carry on doing it. I'm not allergic to any yarns, but I do find some yarns rather prickly and scratchy. Obviously one being 100% um, wool, usually the Highland wool or even the Merino to be honest. Alpaca, definitely one, and um, I, I can't think of anything, I think even, I want to say, I want to say even Angora, any, to be honest, any animal fibre. <laughs> um, kind of makes me scratchy, it feels scratchy, and it's, it's specifically around my neck, it scratches. Now, I don't know why, because I knew that is what it feels like around my neck. I don't know why I keep picking alpaca and stuff for sweaters. So I've come to the realisation that there's no point in doing that, because even though this sweater looks lovely, and I like it, it's not going to be comfortable to wear. Um, the neck is very loose, this, this big neck. So I think I'm going to try to sew in, I know it sounds silly, but I might have to try and sew in some uh, cotton fabric or like t-shirty fabric because I can't stand the feel around my neck. But anyway, so with that said, I have a finished object. I'll, I'll insert a video in a second. Um, and I will not knit any more sweaters with this kind of yarn. Now, I can get away with knitting cardigans with this, um, with alpaca and wool, etc. If it's for winter and I intend to put long sleeves on, because even on the sleeve part, it irritates me. So I don't want to wear that kind of a cardigan if I just got a t-shirt underneath. Um, but I can get away with doing that for winter cardigans. Now, I'll insert a little video, hopefully, 
um, where I've got it on and I'll turn the camera around and you can see me wearing it. Okay, so I have the sweater on now. <laughs> I nearly, I uh, haven't um, stitched up that with the buttons on, I nearly forgot to do this part of the video. So I'm busy editing the podcast, but I've had to run up here and put the sweater on so you can see it. So it fits nice, I like it. Give you a full 360. And let me see, the neck, Kind of, it just hangs like this. It doesn't do what hers does. It's almost like a drapey cowl. Only I, I don't like you can see this. And I'd, I somehow have to get something inside of this because it is unbelievably scratchy. Even, even the arms, because I've only got a t-shirt on. So it's going to have to be very cold when I wear it because I'll have to have a long sleeve tee with it and I'm going to have to put something inside the neck and hopefully I've learnt my lesson and um, chopping my head off there I from now on will either use acrylic or some kind of cotton for the sweaters okay Moving on to what's in the den. I'm trying to see because I put my notebook over here. Um, I have a whore, so let's start with that. And where's it going? What did I do? Hang on, people. I don't know what I've done with the, the bag. I just put my mittens in a new bag. Weird. Hold on. You might have been able to see it. It was right behind me. I don't know if it, I, I don't know if you could see it in the, the shot, but okay. I changed bags and I put my mittens in this bag that a, a sweet friend made for me and sent me, um, because it kind of matches, kind of pinky pink pinks in there. And uh, as I've mentioned. Before, not liking this yarn at all. Thick and thin, um, that I bought at Estes Park. Don't know the company because I don't have a tag for her. I do know she used, she did a lot of yarns where she was taking pictures. The pictures were attached to the yarn. That's what inspired her to do the colours. But she didn't have a picture on this one, but I wanted it anyway. And so I guess, I'm not sure the picture probably had a label on. And this is all that's attached. Which is not very helpful but I have a whore I did block the mitten and it did um, grow a little bit so it is not as tight and it is kind of a nice fit here we go the top is a mess and see this has even got very lots of loose fuzzy hairs if you can see the top is a mess don't even look uh, but and I did add a lot of stitches around the thumb, but that turned out okay, nice, not tight, not really, min not any holes, I don't think. Um, so it is a nice fit. I'm going to keep them in the car. I did try, oh, I didn't try. I was hoping to get the second one on the needles last night, as soon as I uh, finished the thumb, so that I make a start. I don't want just one glove sat in this bag for months on end, but it was getting a bit late. And um, I, I'll do that tonight. I will cast on. The pattern is uh, Bella's Mittens. It's a free pattern on Ravelry. And I, I mean, I like the colours in the yarn. And it looks nice on. I know you're going to see it. But I think it's wonderful. It, it is. I like the look of it. It's super great fit for me. I just didn't, I just don't like knitting with it. I'm not... I mean, it's just, you see, it's a thick and thin, and I, to be honest, I've never knit with a um, single ply thick and thin yarn. So I, I'm going to have a lot left, I think, and I'm not sure whether I'll get a small hat out of it or, or a cowl, probably not. I probably don't even want that around my neck. Mm, not too bad. Um, I'll have to see. I, I thought maybe I could get a... A hat out of it, I'm not sure. 
to match the gloves. But I was knitting mittens for knitting mittens. I was knitting mittens for Danny's knit along, uh, mitt along. Danny from the Little Bobbins Knits podcast. So first knit along, and if I'm not. I think I'm right in thinking the last episode I just watched, Danny, it might have already finished. Um, I'm not sure if it was the end of November. I thought it was the end of December. So if your knit along has finished, that's okay. Um, I will still get this one finished so I have a pair of mittens. And, you know, it's nice motivation trying to uh, knit along with people. Didn't get it finished, that's all. Now, the other thing, let me see. Oh, here he is. Um, I did not get him finished either. And he, I could have had this little guy finished, but I took the buttons out to sew on his face and what, they were on my bedside table and I kept saying, oh, I've got to be careful because they're teeny tiny. And I put something down on the bedside table and I saw it just, oh, <coughs> excuse me, I knocked it off the table. Oh, hang on. Oh, God. I knocked it off the table, so I only had one eye. I didn't bother to um, stitch that on and try and find this other button. Uh, it's probably lost, gone forever. I couldn't find it. I'm going to have to probably try and get put two little um, beads on that I've used. I've got them for the bakery bears, my bears. I think I'll use them. But anyway, and he needs his antlers, so he's not um, completely finished. I need to tie this in or do better tassels because I don't like these. But this is how he's looking so far. I did sew his nose on actually. Um, he's got his little scarf. I made his legs like, you know, bendable, move. I just put one stitch through here back and forth so it's like a jointed. Woohoo, look, you can do the splits. Uh, I'm pulling his threads out. I did that, but his arms are just, um, you know, they don't move around really but I did his legs like that so he can sit if I want him to but I am thinking I might put a um, hanger tassel what do you call it loop here to hang him on a, a, one of my trees um, so he's getting there see his legs are sitting down too I just need his eyes and some antlers I will get him finished um, for next week that is basically all I've worked on because I think I was finishing up the sweater. Um, I've been busy doing a lot of the decorations again. I think I'm just about finished with all my Christmas decorations that I want up. Uh, what I plan on doing is a little video of that as well when it's dark enough to put the lights on, but like not too dark. Um, I'm going to do a little tour. It looks like it's mainly because. Um, my mom and my sister, or me mam, and my sister won't be able to see the lights on the trees um, because once it's dark here, it's after midnight for them kind of thing, or it's getting on for midnight. So I told my sister, she's seen the trees and that up around the house, but I'm sorry, I'm getting very nasally. Um, I said I would do a video so she can, and then I'll show her it on FaceTime and take video and come through and show you all the lights and I'll start from outside. But that's my plan. Um, I should be able to do that on the next show because I'm planning on taking a little video this weekend. So that didn't really leave me with any more knitting time. And, excuse me, I've not even got... Where am I? Hold on. I thought I was going to say something then, I forgot. I can't remember. So moving on, I have written down here Cal News, which is going to be a little bit of show and tell as well, because the cow that I'm talking about is my cow and Sarah and Matt's cow. We're going to do a joint cow knit along in January, probably middle of January. We don't have a January 1st start date uh, planned. Uh, the sweater pattern, excuse me, is... Lawrence. It's a big cow sweater, short sleeves though, a paid for pattern on Ravelry. Now, considering what I just told you about alpaca, etc, etc, 
I had originally bought Barocco's uh, Ultra Alpaca in a grey to do this sweater. See, I don't know why, because I know that's going to be scratchy. It's going to be as scratchy as this one. So, I will be able to kind of use that yarn for mittens or hats. Um, so, I decided I would try to get something else. Go down to the yarn store. That's when I went on Saturday. Um, I took her a little poncettier along for her new shop. And thought I would look around for more yarn to do this sweater. This is what I ended up with. Um, it's universal yarn and it's acrylic. Let me tell you, the only thing I am guaranteed that will not scratch my neck is acrylic and cotton. So I opted to get an acrylic and give this a try. Um, and it's anti-pilling acrylic. But, saying that, I'm not going to use this. Oh gosh, what happened to the lighting? It looks, it looks all yellow. I'm not sure what happened. I'm not going to use this because she only had five in at a time. I picked the grey. I've got the five. I kept saying, oh, I kept meaning to ask her to pull up the pattern on Ravelry to see how much I needed. Because it doesn't have sleeves, I thought it's going to not need a thousand yards, whatever. Maybe it's 800 something. I don't know why. Miscalculation on my part. That's just what I was guessing at. And apparently for the smallest size, you do need a thousand yards and for the next size which is probably what I would do you'll need 1,190. I've got five balls of 180 yards. Not enough so scrap that that's not going to work. I'll have to find something else to knit with that and I can't just go down, run down there and say oh give me the, uh, another ball. She said she only was getting them in in uh, five. She's got lots of colours but they only come five each of those colours so I'm going to have to pick something completely different. So that's not working. Another thing I wanted to mention with the knit-alongs, um, not mine, I'm going to try and join in with lots of other knit-alongs. I'm only doing this one in January with um, Sarah and Matt, who by the way has the Apple Blossom and You podcast. I think I forgot to say that. Um, I'm going to join in with other cows as often as I can and I probably won't have in this group a knit-along until Christmas in July. I just, I know I'm going to be busy, I want to try and get back to sewing, I want to do my shop and keep up with housework etc. Um, I don't want to set cows and then not have enough time to knit along with you. I'm just going to join others if I feel like I'm going to have the time to knit that project or if it's something I do want to knit. So with that said, I do want to try and join in with this next year. I'm not sure if it's, it might be starting January. Um, it's something I had in mind to do quite a few months ago and I never got round to it and it's from Tilly. Hello Tilly! Tilly Trout of the Tilly Trout podcast but her Ravelry group is Trout Male. She's going to have a knit along and it's going to be a tea cosy knit along. Tea cosy cal as I was thinking about it. I thought about doing tea cosy knit along last year I think it was last year, when I did Kiki Boo Bags kits for the tea lovers, but I never got round to it. So, now that Tilly's doing that, it's motivation for me, and I don't actually have a teapot in the house. Uh, I might have to get one of those as well, but I do want to knit a tea cosy, or if I don't get a teapot, because I generally just do a cup of tea for me with a tea bag in the cup, um, it can go in the my gift box or basket, uh, it could perhaps be a little gift for my mom or somebody else in England or a, a nitty friend that I know loves tea. Uh, I don't have to have it for me all of the time and I'm sorry, excuse me, I am getting very sniffy. Sorry. I'm not coming down with a cold, isn't it? It's obviously allergies. Um, but anyway, let's move into show and tell and I'm just looking over there at the notes. I've got a couple of things, nothing related to knitting except for what I just showed you, which was the yarn. I do have a couple of more things. I keep forgetting to show you these. These are my, I want to say Christmas Eve jammies because I'm just a bit like Kristen. I do like to put new jams on. Oh, look at that matches my hand. Uh, on Christmas Eve, I like to sometimes get a pair of pyjamas. I don't do it every year for me, but I got these. <laughs> 
because a few weeks ago somebody was talking on Instagram or showing pictures of the llamas knit and fleece pajamas from Target with llamas Christmassy llamas on. Yeah, you can see that. No, probably not. Um, so I had to pick them up, and I've had them in my closet for a few weeks, and I keep forgetting to show you. But um, those are for Christmas for me and. Bindi's sleeping. Don't tell Bindi. And Boo's outside, so he's okay. I bought the doggies a little Christmas something from Santa Paws. And I showed this picture on um, Instagram yesterday, and I didn't realise what it looked like. But, I don't know, he's got a bit of plastic on there. I didn't realise what it looked like, but... Um, It looked like this, and somebody said, "What's Rudolph doing with Bumbo?" <laughs> and I'm not sure. It's just how it came on the board. But Michelle, Dancing Dog Die Works, my sweet woolly love, I had to get this for the puppies. Uh, Michelle has just done a colourway which I missed for Bumbo from uh, Rudolph. You know the uh, little animated cartoon, not cartoon, but animated show at Christmas. Um, there's Bumble, the abominable snowman, and there's Rudolph. This is the this is a dog rope, obviously. And I'm going to take them off this board, and um, Bindi probably get this one because she's a little she, look. It's got these little things on the end, like little teethers. She loves chewing anything. And who will have this? But probably Bindi will have both after a while. One because she's a bit bossy, and two because Boo sort of loses interest in his toys after a while. Um, so that's. I'm going to take them off individually and they'll get wrapped up and they'll go in their stocking. Uh, and they, they always get little toys and treats from Santa Paws. Just think he's so cute. As I said, Michelle had just done a colourway for him and uh, I didn't grab it. I, I always forget to go on her shop. Now, I'm not sure if you're seeing this, but did you see my nail decal? Oh, of course it's blurry and I can't keep my fingers. Um, look at that, nail snapped. Can't keep them still. There you go, I'm trying to get the glare off it. Um, my fingers are a mess, my hands are very dry, but I got these off Etsy a couple of weeks ago. Nail decals. I've got some Christmas ones as well. I'm going to try and... I need some more white coats of polish on there, and I'm going to try and do um, some Christmas ones on. I'm not sure if I should take this one off. Because on the picture when I bought them, they have them on every single nail. I'm not sure whether to just keep white nails and have one on. That way the decals would last longer. Um, so yeah, a couple of show and tells there. Let's move on and... Uh, no book talk actually, I've not been reading anything. And um, I have actually... Take that back, I've not been reading anything fiction wise. I have been reading some books out of the library, but... I can't tell you what they are, because it's a secret right now. It's just some ideas I'm playing around with, and I got some books out of the library that I saw on Amazon. And if I can get them out of the library first to see whether or not they're worth buying, I do that. So, can't tell you what they were. Yeah, I'm keeping secrets. Um, so moving into In the Kitchen. I've been in the kitchen all week. Uh, I've never I never take videos of what I'm doing and I haven't got anything to show you, but let me see what I've written down. I did make, with some leftover turkey, the turkey and wild rice soup, which is one of my favourites. Um, if I remember, I might either stick the link to the recipe or I might just put in the uh, Ravelry thread how I made my soup because I kind of adapt this recipe. It's very simple. I didn't even follow the recipe this time. I just knew from memory. I simply, um, quickly, I'll tell you, saute some onions in a pan. I'm sorry, my nose is just terrible. Then I throw in like a cup and a half of frozen vegetables, just the small things, kind of like these. This time it was just peas and carrots, frozen peas and carrots. Toss them in, and after a little bit, I throw in some flour, a couple of tablespoons of flour to coat everything, the, the onions and the veggies kind of get coated and after that you kind of cook them for a couple of minutes, you always want to kind of cook that flour 
um, otherwise it tastes, the, the soup or any of your dishes will taste flowery. So I cooked that, then I poured in, I just guessed at the liquid amount, but it's like chicken stock, poured in, uh, maybe, it depends on how much soup you want and how many vegetables you kind of threw in there. I want to guess maybe it's four cups I put in, could have been more. And then you add cream to that once it's heated up. And then I separately boil uh, long grain and wild rice. I used a Zatarans um, brand. It's just in a packet and you, it's got spices and kind of herby things in with the rice. I boil that till all the water is soaked up. It's, it's a rice dish, it's not watery, you don't have to drain it. But then I put the rice in the soup. And that's about it. And it's absolutely delicious. And I love making it after Thanksgiving or Christmas. I think come Christmas we're not going to do turkey because we just had one. We might do a ham. So, uh, And then with that, leftovers, I love pea and ham soup. Love, love my soups in the winter. So that was in the kitchen. I have also made more Delia's shortbread. I cannot keep that in the kitchen. Uh, Kay can't keep that in the kitchen for more than a day or two. It's a small pan, it's only an eight inch uh, pan. It's, if you haven't seen Kay and Dan from the Bakery Bears podcast, um, their last episode, Kay made this shortbread. Excuse me, I think I'm going to stop this and come back a second. I'm sorry, I had to just go clear my nose a little. Um, so yes, Kay, I made some more shortbread, it's gone again. And I've also made this week, I did look at Delia's sausage roll recipe, like you had showed. And I don't know if I mentioned this last week. Delia Smith, who Kay has been talking a lot about and I absolutely love, um, is a chef, cook in England. And we, I showed you her Christmas books, you know, recipe books and that last week. She has on her website not just recipes and everything, she's got videos um, where she shows you uh, how to cook a lot of things even to actually boiling or making egg dishes I mean it's so for the beginner cook she she wants to teach you how to cook if you don't know how to and she mentioned in one of those videos and I didn't realize this that she wanted to do this because back in the 80s apparently they stopped teaching cooking in school when I was at school, we used to have cookery class. Um, the boys would have woodwork or metalwork, and I'd, I'd took those as well. We'd rotate, and actually saying that, the boys didn't just have that. The boys did do cooking as well. We would rotate those three things, and boys went into the kitchen and made stuff. And I would take home, you got to take home what you made, and we made like pineapple upside down cake, we make the Victoria sponge cake. It was mainly baking. I can't remember me just cooking as... Uh, casseroles we might have done but I can't remember chopping onions carrots and making a casserole I remember the baking and because apparently they've stopped that in school so the kids don't even get taught that and if you if they're not getting taught that at home then they're not they haven't a clue how to make pastry or pies or biscuits cookies as we call them bread anything like that so Delia Smith online has some cooking shows or cooking classes um, that you can go along and check. She shows you how to make that shortbread and she shows you how to make the sausage rolls. I made the pastry, it's simply, it was honestly flour and butter. She didn't put any fat in, like, not fat, she didn't put any lard in as we used to, my mum used to do with pastry, lard and butter, half and half. Um, over here they use a, what we call Crisco, which is a, um, a white fat, it's not the butter. And uh, I made my own pastry and I did the sausage rolls. Oh, they've all gone. <laughs> um, absolutely delicious. I plan on making some more today because I would like to make them smaller, like bite-sized pieces, and for tomorrow night's party, have them as a little appetizer, bring them out of the oven fresh when people are arriving. I'm going to plan on doing that. Absolutely yummy, delicious. So that's what I also I made in the kitchen. I also, today I'm going to make mince pies, the sweet mince pies. I'm going to check Delia's recipe as well. I did just buy a jar of mincemeat 
And my goal, which I love them, so I'm going to make some for Christmas for me, but I thought I'm going to send home our friends tomorrow night after the party with a little mince pie each. I'm going to wrap them up like a favour. I wrap them in the little bag and put some ribbon round and they can take them home and try an English mince pie. Some of them might not even want to try them. So that's why I'm letting them take them home and they can decide. Um, I don't want them to feel bad and feel like they have to try and eat one in front of me. But i will be making mince pies today and lots of, I told you there's tons going on in the um, kitchen. I'll just tell you briefly if you're wondering. Uh, the menu for tomorrow night, we've, Michelle and I have tried to make it really, really simple. We're going to serve some pomegranate champagne when our friends arrive. So that will be, you know, bottles of bubbly with, I like to add a little bit of um, pomegranate schnapps. And just kind of turns it all red and festive looking. And then I've got a fresh pomegranate and I'm going to get all the seeds out of that. And then you sprinkle a few fresh pomegranate seeds into your glass of champagne. It's one of my favourites. Uh, looks very festive because it's red, so we're going to do that as a you know welcome drink. We'll have wine and such, well, wine and such. We'll have red wine, white wine after that, and we're making. We're going to have stuff in crock pots so that we don't have to be cooking. It's going to be already cooked and will be kept hot. Michelle's making some chili, and we're doing cornbread to go with that. And I'm making one of my favourite and hubby's favourite soups is the Olive Garden copycat soup. It's uh, Zuppa Toscana, I think they call it. Um, that's the creamy one with uh, Italian sausage meat, sausage in it, potatoes, kale, cream and bacon, onions and it's delicious and I'm going to do garlic breadsticks like Olive Garden does. I'm going to do that to go along with my soup in the crock pot. We'll also have on the table uh, bowls of salad and as I said we'll have the cornbread and the, the garlic bread with salad and then for dessert, Michelle's coming over tonight to do this. I'm super excited. We're going to make shooters. I mentioned them the other week, I think. I got little shooter glasses. It's all the rage. You make individual desserts instead of like a big bowl of. So I'm going to make um, cheesecake. Hang on, what was it called? Salted caramel cheesecake shooters. I think that's what they were. I saw the picture on uh, Pinterest. Um, and it's on my Instagram page as well. I think I posted that a few weeks ago. And I'm also going to do a chocolatey one. Um, that's going to simply just be chocolate brownie, layered at chocolate pudding, perhaps vanilla pudding, brownie, pudding, pudding. And um, shaved chocolate on the top. So those are going to be our desserts. And I might have some extra mince pies out if people want to try them there. And I'm super excited because it's going to be wonderful. I need to shop shop staking my head. I need to stop shaking my head. It's my gosh, I could be driving some of you crazy. Um all right, with that said, still chatting on girly chatter. I don't have a specific topic this week. As I said, I always seem to just chat the whole way through anyway. But sometimes I'll have a specific uh, topic I want to chat about. This week I don't. I do want to say, because I'm going to, I'm busy for the next couple of days, so I've got nothing else to chat about, just told you all about what I'd be doing. I want you to chat to me this week. Please get into the Ravelry group and just, once I open a thread for this episode, you can chat to me. Tell me what you're doing this week. Um, are you busy getting ready for Christmas? Is it getting stressful for you? Are you knitting Christmas gifts and running out of time? I hope not. I hope it's. I hope you're getting organised, and I hope you're gonna, you know, enjoy the season. Twenty-three days. It's gonna go super fast, but I really would like you to get in there and chat to me. I, as I've said before, I might be a little behind. Once the week gets to the to an end, I realise I haven't answered everybody or replied and responded to all your lovely comments in the group. I do try to go back and do that. So, and I always try if you do leave. Um, a message or a comment or you chat to me I try to chat back and respond. So let me know what you're up to um, because with that said it's kind of the end of the show and it might not have been that short because you know I've got a I don't even know how many minutes there's on there you know I um, can chat on and on and on but oh 
So I haven't even mentioned the decor though, look. I'm all Christmassy and my bedroom's all Christmassy. I've got lights on across there. I've got my little uh, wreaths. I took the pictures down and the wreaths. And at the beginning of the show, you saw this, but I've just forgot to mention it. And right in front of me, staring and blocking my view of the view, <laughs> but I can see it out the rest of the windows. I've put a tree up and it, our little tree this year is dedicated to our puppies. We've got little doggies on and some bones and um, I'll flip it around and just show you quickly before the end of the show. There, there you go. I always have to stop and start the camera to flip it and um, I was going to try and get in and show you a little close-up look. We have little doggies. We got these a few years ago because um, Kristen was always loving dogs. And I made these bones. <laughs> these are fabric. I made them a few years ago to put on a tree. Well, when we were thinking about a doggy themed tree for Kristen. Um, I've got another doggy there. I'll try and zoom up. Look. Teddy bear pushed behind there. Um, there's not much on because I, I just, to be honest, I'll... I've swapped trees around this year and I've kind of just used uh, whatever baubles and stuff I had left and the doggies were what I had left as well. So uh, I've used them and that's how it's looking right now. Um, it's quite dark. The lights are on it though. Um, I can still see, you know, the view a little bit. Um, Nice and sunny, normal view today. All right, just position that again. And um, that's it, folks. I'm finished with everything I've got to chat about. And yeah, I'll leave you with that. Got a busy day. I'm going to get this uploaded, hopefully. And um, it might be there by this evening. One last thing, iTunes, for those that are trying to watch on iTunes, I'm still having issues some weeks. I think the issue was mine last week and the week before. I did not get episode 139 uploaded. For some reason, I couldn't shrink my file. Uh, I need to look into that. And last week, I thought I did, I thought I shrunk the file. I thought it was okay. I uploaded through Podcast Garden. And then um, I was told yesterday there was only one minute showing. And I, in fact, it doesn't even play at all. So I have no idea why. I'll try to look into it. But if I'm honest... Once my subscription or whatever it is that I paid for, a yearly subscription with Podcast Garden, once that expires and I don't know when it runs out, I'm not going to renew it. And I'm really sorry if that means you can't watch anymore. I'd be very, very sad if that's the case. But it's just easier for me to, to do this and upload via YouTube like many of the other podcasters are doing. It's free. Uh, and really, I don't seem to have any hassle like I do with iTunes and Podcast Garden and so that is what's going to happen in the future but I will, while I still am able to upload to iTunes, I will look into why it wasn't uploading to iTunes. So I'm really sorry about that. Um, I don't want to leave on a downer note so I hope let's leave on a happy note. Christmas is coming and I'm excited. Um, I hope you're looking forward to the holidays as well. And I hope you get everything done. I hope you're organised and hope you're not getting stressed. And I hope you come back next week. And join me in the knitting den. Bye, guys. <laughs>